Greetings from the European Parliament studio in Strasbourg. My name is Ilza Nagla and today we will talk about our past and how it influences our present and about celebrations of the end of the Second World War. Is it on May 8th or on May 9th? This question has become sort of an ideology. And today I'm joined by Rasa Yuknavichiene. She is Lithuanian MEP here in the European Parliament from EPP party. And she has been also a Lithuanian Minister of Defense for four years. Very nice to have you. Thank you. And from Estonia, I'm joined uh, by Riho Teres, also from the EPP political group. Uh, he was a commander of Estonian Defense Forces for seven years, and in 2017 he became a general. Very nice to have you here. You. Uh, my question is, in Latvia, the main May 9th is still a big celebration of as a victory day. Uh, mostly Russian-speaking uh, population celebrates this. What is the situation in Estonia? Do you still have that, that like two days when to celebrate uh, end of, of the war? One sort of group is celebrating it on the 8th of May, the other one on the 9th of May. Well, for me, my feeling is that for Estonia is not that relevant at all. I mean, I agree with, uh, with the people who say that uh, you should allow uh, everybody to celebrate their parties and, and, and uh, if you are not uh, putting any restrictions then uh, people go put their flowers to their uh, tomb of unknown soldier and then go home uh, and for Estonians it's not uh, a celebration at all not eight not nine uh, it is not uh, actually a topic I mean some people uh, put some wreath on the 8th of May uh, some officials and so on but the people, the people in Estonia have no big celebration and there's not a debate about it. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. so I should admit. Do you, do you celebrate the end of the war or the, the victims no. of the war? No, in Estonia, when, as I said, for the Russian-speaking population, and, and kind of, it is kind of an emotional thing and, and nobody puts restrictions. They can do what they, what they think to do. Young people less, older people see that as, a, as something uh, to show that they're, they're different. Uh, but for Estonians, this is not the question, and and, and you don't see that uh, anywhere. Uh, but just around the tomb of the unknown soldier, you would see people. That's it. And what is the situation in Lithuania? Do you have this sort of double double date? Ninth of uh, May, uh, officially, we are celebrating Day of Europe, when Schuman Declaration was signed, and more and more especially young people in the schools. We have some special projects just to remind, to celebrate uh, Europe's day. Uh, but speaking about the end of World War II, so there are some divisions, uh, but um, less and less, uh, maybe not in Lithuanian community, Lithuanian, I, I would say, community, but those uh, uh, Russian-speaking so-called people, uh, LDA people, of course, the 9th of May, still celebrating in the cemetery mainly, and tackling the cemetery mainly in, in Vilnius and putting flowers, and it's, 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 they think so. Uh, but 8th of May, of course, uh, despite that it was not the end of the war for us, for our nations at that time in 45 but it is important day because it was the end at least for of holocaust of of uh, defeat uh, of nazi germany and of course it's important but we are uh, remembering this in 8th of 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 may uh, and also paying tribute of, to all of those they lost their lives during uh, this very brutal and, and bloody bloody war uh, but what we saw with the 9th of May, uh, with the celebrations in Latvia, we thought that it's, uh, it will be the, just for the veterans of the war, that they would come to the, uh, the, the, the monument, would lay some flowers, and then with time passing and they, them passing away as well, the, sort of this whole celebration will die out. But it has not happened. Mm. There are young people joining in, and there's a, actually a big celebration uh, in, uh, in 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 front of the Victory uh, Monument in in Riga every every 9th of May. Why do you think you ha how you have managed to avoid that? Mm. I think it's very much related with our uh, neighboring country, Russia and Kremlin uh, politics um, related with history. Um, here in the European Parliament, I am coordinating the group on remembrance. And we see uh, from our side that uh, Kremlin, they are uh, using history 
somehow as a hybrid tool uh, to make chaos and to increase, to push people, especially those uh, of Russian nationality, uh, not to forget it. And I think they are fueling uh, this process, especially, especially in the countries where they have this soil, uh, better, better soil, I mean, to fuel, uh, fuel that. So I think it is very much related with, the, with the, our, our neighboring countries. When Russia will become democratic, and they will, they will understand that uh, the um, uh, Soviet Union uh, controversy, was very controversial, not only a country which uh, uh, fought against uh, fascism, but also uh, many other issues related with their history, I think it will be easier yeah, and for your country and other countries to, uh, to deal with different uh, opinions. In Estonia, Russian minority, of course, is smaller than in, in, in Latvia. But do you feel that also we just mentioned Russia and sort of Russia's support for celebrations like that, but also on other topics that there is a push to get a sort of Russian agenda on Estonian public, on Russian-speaking Estonians? Yeah, well, uh, of course, uh, Russia is misinterp uh, misinterpret uh, misinterpreting history, is using history and, and uh, rewriting history. Uh, and, of course, there are many attempts to uh, push it on, on the, on the Russian-speaking population in Estonia, uh, which, is, uh, which has been a problem in the past. I think one important move was to, to the remove the monument uh, of the unknown soldier from the center of the city to the cemetery. Because in the cemetery, there's not the political declaration. In the cemetery, people go uh, because of But at of the, the moment when Estonians did that, that was a, a, a yeah, big it was, scandal. It was, but it wasn't the right time and the right place, and it, it worked. Uh, but today, I would say young people are more interested on, uh, on the jobs, on the, on the perspectives, uh, and uh, not uh, on confrontation. As le at least as much as I know, I'm coming from the region where there were only 8% Estonians, so I, I, I know what, what I'm talking about. Uh, I, of course, Russia tries, but uh, I think I will compare it with their weather forecast. If, uh, and, and, and of course, the uh, Russian television, which is very often uh, used by the elderly people. Young people don't watch television, and that is good. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but the elderly people watch television. But if you are told every day uh, that it is raining outside. But if you look outside and you see it's not raining, so you'd rather believe what you see yourself than <laughs> what is told in the television. And that is exactly the same, same about what Russia tells in the television and what really happens in the, in the Baltic states. I'm not that familiar with Latvia, but in Estonia, uh, young people are concentrated on, on being part of Estonian society, being part of European Union. Uh, and, and, the, and the extremist part, uh, which always in every country there is a certain portion of extremists that is in Germany, that is in France. Uh, these people are, are there as well. But uh, as long as they are just a tiny minority trying to put the Kremlin agenda and uh, the, other, the broader population is not picking up on that, uh, then it's, uh, it's no problem. I mean, uh, we have a, a mayor of Tallinn who is actually originally a Russian speaker. Uh, but he, uh, he never supports any of the Russian agenda. You see it in the, in the television, in, in what he does. Uh, and so there's, there's really no big, big split between these two societies. But would you agree with what uh, uh, Mrs. Yuknavichian said, that if Russia becomes uh, democratic, then all this sort of disinformation will stop from Russia? Well, I don't know what is ra democratic mm -hmm. Russia, and mm -hmm. I think the Russians never had that. Uh, it is normally a chaos. I mean, if there is not, a, say, guided democracy, then it is chaos. And they, they have had a couple of months of chaos uh, in 1917, and that was the only democracy they had. Okay, perhaps Yeltsin time some days as well, but that's it. I don't know. I, 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 I always say for the Baltic states, weak Russia is better than the strong Russia. <laughs> uh, and and uh, right now Russia is pretty strong, but on the path down, so, uh, because Putin is going. Uh, so we, we, our strength in, uh, in Europe is that we keep our, us all 27 together. NATO, strong alliance. European Union strong alliance, and Russia tries to split us always uh, by using this soft means of uh, 
manipulating and and uh, during the uh, during the uh, April uh, 2007 as uh, they attract us by cyber means that was the first use of cyber as a weapon uh, it helped us it helped us to convince the, the our allies that cyber is a domain which needs to be taken care it is still an actual question so Russia always helps if we have some argument problems then uh, if we had some budget problems in the Estonian defense budget, uh, they attacked Georgia uh, <laughs> and the... Uh, yeah, Russia helps uh, as well. <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, if we had some problems with the, uh, with the air policing, uh, extension of the air policing, of NATO's air policing in the Baltic states, Russia due to violations of the <laughs> airspace and the problem was solved. And an next year. And, <laughs> yeah, and so they, they always kind of uh, over, uh, overplay their card. Uh, we, we, but uh, but Europe needs to be stronger towards Russia. If Russia plays ice hockey, we should not uh, do ice skating. We should play ice hockey uh, as well. Sometimes in in this house, I see there that some people want to do figure skating, and that mm -hmm. will not help. Just to being too soft against Russia. Yes. Uh, yeah, but uh, I still believe that in my lifetime, Russia maybe can be will be different. Because uh, remember, some uh, 84, 85, I never expected that I will uh, speak in front of you as member of uh, European Parliament at that time. So nobody expected, maybe. So nobody knows. Uh, but we have to, to do as much as possible to help Russians to uh, think that they have some alternative, helping Ukraine, helping Georgia, helping Moldova. Today is uh, outmost important. Uh, so I think that uh, we spoke about the and pushing generation. Belarus. Uh, yeah, pushing <laughs> Belarus, but uh, also uh, we spoke a lot about uh, young people, young generations in Russia. Also, uh, they have young generation, young people, uh, and I think that uh, despite that, uh, uh, they uh, are under this pressure, Kremlin pressure and disinformation environment. But still, they also can see that outside is sun shining, not. Uh, always raining, as it was mentioned. So I believe that uh, with, with, with different Russia, we will uh, be able to solve many problems. Thank you so much. And on this positive note, we will finish our discussion that our past does affect our present and affect our future, but it's up to us how to shape it. Thank you and bye. Thank you very much. <laughs>